What's going on all my toy collectors and horror movie maniacs out there? You know who it is. It's your boy Ox and welcome to the Cave of Wonders. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Ultimate Ghostface action figure by NECA Toys. Now this figure right here along with a bunch of other ones was dropped off by one of my subscribers Mari. So shout out to Mari for dropping these figures off to me. He hit me up. He said, hey Ox, I want to see a bunch of the horror movie maniac figures and some of the predator figures on your channel. I said, all right man, drop them off and I'll do a review for you. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So starting off with the front of the box, I've already measured this thing out for you. It comes out to six and a half by nine and a half, unless you're including that little um, hanging tab right up there at the top, which end up being 11 inches by two and a half inches in depth. OK, so that's how much shelf space you're going to need if you're going to be displaying this in the box. Now, you guys can see Ghostface right here. Like I said, it is the ultimate Ghostface. So this isn't a specific um, Ghostface from one of the movies that had came out over the decades. This is just their ultimate edition. OK. Now taking a look at the side of the box, you can see Ghostface right there holding his little um, voice changer. You got a knife right here. On the back, you can see an image of the action figure right there. You can see a bunch of different uh, features that this figure have. The weapons that he comes with also let you know that it does glow in the dark. One of the face sculpts is going to glow in the dark, okay? Now, if you open up, you can see the figure right there. This isn't like a, a, a image from a movie or anything like that. This is the actual action figure. And NECA just took a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool photo of it right there. You guys can see a clear package window showing you some of the accessories that are inside. See, it comes with three different knives, some hands, um, this big old sling blade right there, a uh, bunch of different head sculpts. So let's go ahead and pop him out of the box. Okay, now here's Ghostface out of the box. You can see it comes with the figure. It comes with this little sling blade weapon right here. Not really sure what this thing's called, like a corn husk or something like that. He comes with uh, three knives. comes with a voice changer box. It comes with three extra head sculpts and two extra swappable hands, okay? Now let's start off with this. Like I said, I call this thing like a sling blade or, you know, like a... You know, something you would see like a scarecrow in like a horror movie have or something like that. I actually don't think I ever seen him actually use this in the movie. Uh, if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. But I don't remember him using this in one of the movies. But taking a look at it up close, really good detail. This plastic actually looks like wood. I like, I love how they paint these. Neck always does a really good job with their paint sculpts and detail. So... You can see it right there. Obviously, you can see the difference between the way it makes it look like metal and look like wood. So really good detail on it. This right here is that little voice changer box. This fits inside one of his hands. Just painted one color. But sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to zoom in. It's so small. But yep, there it is right there. Yep. Little voice changer box. He also comes with three knives. This right here is your regular old kitchen knife, and they all have blood on them already, okay? Yep, there it is. Then you have this one that looks like um, kind of like a uh, like a hunting knife or something like that. But that has blood on it as well. You can see all the little wood grain in the handle. And then one more, which is kind of smaller. It's kind of like a boot knife or something like that, I would say. Because it's a little bit smaller than the other knife. But they all have blood on them. Then he comes with two extra pairs of hands. Now out of the box, he has like an open hand on his left one, which I'll show you in a second. That's the one that ends up holding that voice changer box. He has two closed fists, just like this one, uh, right hand that's already on there. This one right here. And then he has, uh, and, but they both they both can hold something basically. They have a hole in them so you guys can slide a weapon in there. Then you have this one, which is a little bit more open that you can, guys can just spread the fingers. You guys can fit something in there as well. All right. Now he has three pairs of heads. I actually really like this one right here with the blood splatter on it. And you guys just pull off his hoodie and I'll show you how to pop these on in a second. Okay. But yeah, that right there is the one with the blood on it. This right here looks more like uh, dark, like maybe he got burnt or been through it for a while. So like he's done use this mask a lot. Has a lot of texture and weathering to it. Pretty cool looking head sculpt. And this right here is green. So obviously this right here is the glow in the dark one. And I'll put this in front of the light and show you guys what it looks like once I swap the head on. Okay. Let's take a look at that figure up close. I've already measured him out for you guys. He comes out to seven and three eighths. All right. Taking a look at him up close. Like I said, if you guys, when you guys do want to swap his head out, you guys just pull this little hood off right here and then you guys pop off his head. Okay. 
but taking a look at him up close looks really good fabric outfit so i can't see his uh i can feel his articulation so i'll be able to tell you guys his articulation in a second but uh i'm sure you guys can actually take this off if you guys want and you guys can see what he looks like underneath which just kind of looks like a little it's funny because it looks like a little smooth plastic figure underneath but obviously you're not meant to have this off because you know this gives him his ghost face look and you guys can see the fabric right here drapes right underneath his uh, his forearms just like it did in the movie that way when it's running it kind of looks like it's like streaking in the wind basically on both arms Taking a look at his jeans, like I said, up here, once you go past his waist, it's all smooth plastic right there, which, you know, just looks kind of funny. But uh, his jeans look really good. His boots are kind of like, a, uh, they're black, but they kind of have a reddish, like a really dark reddish burgundy to them as well. So they're not just flat black boots, but you can see the metal right around the lace parts where the laces go in it. The soles, all the detail right in there which is pretty cool. And there's not a whole lot of detail on his actual fabric suit, on his uh, ghost face suit, obviously, because it's not meant to have it. That's the way it looked even in the movie, okay? Let's quickly go over his articulation. I'll swap him heads out for you guys, all right? His head goes up to about there, goes down to about there. Like I said, you can't see his articulation, but his arms do go up. They do rotate right there at the shoulders. He does have, I'm trying to see if he has bicep swivel, but you can't really see. He actually has elbow swivel. So his elbows do move. They do have double jointed elbows. They do swivel. His forearms don't swivel, but he does have, um, uh, was it wrist articulation? They do go in, they do go out. Now I can feel right here underneath the suit that he does have upper torso articulation. So it does bend back pretty far, does move forward pretty well. Doesn't have any kind of waist swivel. His legs do kick out, to kick out to there, right there. They do rotate. Now all. Yeah, I guess they do rotate around. Let me see up here. See if I can see any kind of thigh swivel. No, no thigh swivel, but they do rotate up at the leg, all right? It does have single jointed knees, but they do rotate right there. They don't rotate right up here at the calf, but his boots do rotate. They do go up. They do go down. They do rock side to side, and he doesn't have any kind of toe articulation, okay? But still, a really awesome looking figure, man. I love the way this thing looks. Really dope. Let's go ahead and pop off that head real quick and I'll pop on the other ones for you guys and I'll show you what the one looks like in the dark as well. Okay, now here he is with that um, distress mask on right there with his little voice changer in his hand. You can see I put that bigger butcher. This is the biggest knife that he comes with. It's that big old butcher knife. But yep, right here's how he looks. Now here he is with the bloody face. I swapped out that uh, knife for this uh, kind of bigger buoy knife right here, this hunting knife. Yep. I really like this one. This is the head sculpt I'm actually going to probably display him with. I love it with all that blood splattered on it. Looks pretty cool, man. Like I said, even the detail on the knife looks really dope. Yep. Okay, here you guys can see it's glowing pretty well. I just literally held him in front of the light for probably like 30 seconds. But his face glows really bright. I actually really like this as well. I didn't think this was going to be very bright. Um... I'll wait a quick second and see exactly how uh, how long it might stay on for a second. So uh, that way I can give you guys a definitive answer for how long it might glow for. Just with me holding it, like I said, I only held it up there for like maybe 15, 20 seconds. So, but yeah, shines really bright and I have him pretty far away from the camera right now. Okay, now here he is with that huge sling blade thing in his hands. As you guys can see, I had to pop out his left hand and put a, uh, a different gripping hand in there. But it ends up holding that thing right here and right here on both the little handles, okay? And you guys can obviously, um, you know, flip this around and have it sliding in through the top rather than him holding it from the bottom. But I kind of like the way this looks. Look like he's just going to, you know, swing it and chop somebody in half or, you know, slit someone's stomach open or something. But yeah, now as you guys can see, his face is still glowing. I uh, I paused my video and I waited like two minutes, two or three minutes just to see what would happen. But it's still basically glowing. I'm not going to turn off the lights again, but I can still see it glowing even with the lights on. So I'm pretty sure that uh, that face will glow per, for a pretty good amount of time. If you guys leave it in front of the, the light or something for maybe like five or ten minutes, I'm pretty sure it will glow for a while inside your guys' uh, man cave or whatever, all right? Okay, now here he is compared to some other NECA horror movie maniac figures. We got Freddy Cougar, we got Jason Voorhees, and we got Charles Lee Ray. Obviously, Charles Chucky's going to be a lot smaller because he's just a doll. But all these other figures, you can see they all line up really well in scale with each other. And they all have 
great articulation, great detail. The paintwork is amazing on Freddie's sweater. I don't know if you guys ever seen a review of him, but uh, he has really not just the lines, but he has like little striped knitting lines and all in his shirt. And that's really dope. The same with uh, my boy Jason right here. You can see uh, all the mud and everything and the, the glossiness like he's been standing in the rain and in the mud and everything like that. So they do a, NECA always does a really good job on all their figures. I know I say that a lot whenever I'm uh, reviewing any of the NECA figures, but that's because they're worth the money you pay for them. They do really great jobs. These are really great pieces to display, you know, in, you know, if you guys are a fan of these older, uh, you know, horror figures back in the day, you know. But yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thank you again to my subscriber, Mari, for dropping off these figures. You guys stay tuned because I'm also going to be taking a look at this uh, this Michael Myers figure right here. This is also by NECA. Um, this is the ultimate Michael Myers figure. I'm going to be doing a review on him next. That figure was also dropped off by my subscriber, Mari. So big shout out to him, man. Thank you for making this review possible. And until next time, stay cool.